Greetings. I hope this video finds you well and prospering. Hey, check this out. Listen, I, I, I'm going to keep saying this on my channel. Men and women should get their passports and travel abroad. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I think that's very valuable. It'll help uh, give you a, a different perspective. And uh, experience is a great teacher. And so, observing this passport thing, man, I get it. You know, algorithm is everybody is triggered on the passport thing and everybody wants to chime in. I think it's probably right now it's more women chiming in than men because I'm looking at, you know, I try to follow a couple of guys that's up on some good game and they're always sharing uh, clips from females. I don't, I don't really go and listen to, I don't really go and listen to female content like that. I already know what they're talking about. I already, I already know what women are on. And men who make content, they already know what women are on. So it's like, why do you have to keep putting it out there like that? Like, you sharing people content, you're really that's really promoting them. So that's why I don't be I don't be adding clips of other people's stuff to me because I'm on a whole entire uh, different level over here. Yeah, I find my words to be sufficient. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not about to put on the uh, suit and a tie. I'm not about to have no uh, bunch of props set up to just simply kick some game to y'all. A lot of this uh, thumbnail stuff and all that type of stuff, man. This stuff look like some uh, some Master P album covers back in the day. Master P. CD covers from the No Limit, No Limit Records. Yeah, if you recall, I'm an OG. So yeah, the uh, the CD covers they was you know they was like a picture of the artist and they somewhere out somewhere kicking it on a car or something, and No Limit came with all of that chaos on their CD covers. Yeah, it was just like a bunch of just t t tacky. Yeah, that's the. That's the best way to describe it, tacky. So a lot of people that make content, you see their video on your on your on your feed, and it's it's tacky. It reminds me of No Limit Records CD covers. Like you look at it, just like all type of uh, cartoon characters and gold chains and yeah, just drugs and guns and shit. It just was just busy as hell. Yeah, and even even in the Bible, Paul said he'd rather give you something simple and plain rather than to have all of that elaborate. So a lot of people, they try to come to you with all that elaborate stuff. Yeah, Ke uh, Kevin Samuels, he want to he wanna come to you with the uh, suit and the tie. And a lot of these guys, they sit down like, like they're... Uh, uh, Dan Brokaw, someone like they had a news, like they had news reporters. <laughs> I be mean, like, man, what are y'all, what are y'all doing, man? And a lot of these individuals do that because they feel inadequate. Yeah, they don't, they don't think that they are enough. And here, and 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 this is what this 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 video is is uh, pointing at. A man has, I would say, three modes in life. Startup mode, striving mode, and established mode. So what I've noticed with the YouTube content creator passport guys, a lot of them are startup guys and striving guys. They're startup men, striving men. They're in the beginning of manhood, and then they're striving to still find themselves within manhood. They're not established yet. See, me, 
I lived in the Philippines for two years serving in the United States Air Force, 1988 to 1990. So that's why I said, hey, I can add some good insight to this foreign versus domestic type discussion. Foreign women, foreign culture, American women, American culture. Because I spent eight years in law enforcement. So I was, you know, I was, I was in the game. I was in the gutters and in the penthouse. I was probably one of the very few, uh, if if not the only 20 year old that was working with the Secret Service. Yeah, I was an explosive detection canine handler. So the Secret Service would request a, a canine team from the Air Force. And listen, my supervisors, my commanders, they had no problem sending me. I went on a lot of Secret Service details, me and my dog at the time. Yeah, we did a lot of that. Even when Nelson Mandela was on his tour of America, the Detroit Police Department requested a, uh, a canine, canine team from the Air Force, and my base sent me. So the Detroit Police Department flew up in a the helicopter. They said, no, we don't even want him to drive. We'll come get him. We need him right away. So they flew up in the helicopter, picked me and my dog up, flew me down to Detroit. I had to clear uh, Tiger Stadium. Nelson Mandela was coming to, uh, he was coming to address the crowd in Detroit. And so Detroit came out with all of the people, you know, the, the Winans and uh, the Detroit Pistons and Aretha Franklin, them. And yeah, they all just came. Stevie Wonder. It was just a big Motown party with uh, President Nelson Mandela being freed and coming to the United States. I was there. Yeah, I've had God's favor like that my entire life. So I was there working with the Detroit Police Department. It was work, but it really was a major life experience. And so me and them, I worked with them. And we had to clear Tiger Stadium for no bomb threats. So... I've been to some, I've been places and I've done some things. And that's why this channel is about some insight and some observation and some experiences and some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's why I say I'm the elder. A lot of these individuals, they still striving. They're not established. See, YouTube could shut this off right now and I'm good because I'm already established. My grandparents left me land, so I inherited some land to live on. Me, I made up in my mind that I was going to retire in my mid-40s. I did that uh, almost seven years ago at the age of 47. Now I'm 53 calendar years old, and my four children are adults. So when I see young men traveling and they're giving information, and some of these young men are younger than my children, I look at that like, okay, I get it because you're young and inexperienced, but I can add to the discussion. See, I don't think I don't think any individual that's in their early 20s should be teaching stuff like this and that and this and that. But that's what this internet thing has brought to the forefront. Individuals who are inexperienced at life. Sort of like what the police department did. I was a Milwaukee police officer for three years. The Milwaukee Police Department, as like a lot of all these other departments, started looking at candidates on their college credits versus life experience. So see me, I was a I was a great fit because I had college credits, I had prior military law enforcement experience. And a little bit of life experience. So I had the good combination of things, but then they started favoring uh, these early 20 year old men and women who had degrees in criminal justice. So they come, they go from living at home with their parents to college. And then they apply at these police departments with a degree in criminal justice, criminal knowledge, criminal investigation, whatever, criminal law. So these departments are like, oh, because you had to, a lot of these places, 
to be state certified, you have to have so many college credits. So they started favoring these young kids right out of college. They didn't, uh, they didn't have no law enforcement experience. That's why now you can see it's just it's, it's, it's being recorded now. Yeah, all this, all of these inexperienced police officers, men and women. So now you see the same thing in the past, poor bro community. A lot of inexperienced individuals. Listen, they not married, never been married. They haven't raised any kids. They haven't established any land. They don't have any homes. And they just, they get an online following. And then that fuels them doing the passport thing. And then either they can stay in that or get out of that. But a few of them, they just recognize, hey, I can make money doing this. And so, you know, I can get a lot of, you know, get attention doing this, boom, boom, boom. And then, so they started going overseas. But men have been doing that for years. We Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of people like, yeah, man, people been traveling and doing that for years. Yes. But not to make content. So, yeah, now you got, you know, they doing it to make the content and boom, boom, you know, and it's just, they're, they're startup men and striving men, very inexperienced. And so me, I'm an established man. I'm an established man. I'm in a position where I'm on cruise control. And so I can speak upon the game of having been overseas, you know, several times. I, I figure I add some insight to the game, but that's not my total existence. Yeah, I know it's a uh, it's trending and everybody talking about it right now. Just like uh, what women bring to the table is trending. You know, this this internet it, it's this internet kind of fuels the discussion. But in my everyday real life, I'm, I'm all about up on some peace and health. Peace and health. And then uh, we'll get to this other stuff at my leisure. Like this, I'm not pressing to do this stuff. Like people be striving to make videos and edit and do all that. I'm not striving for all that. Now YouTube has partnered with a bunch of scams and frauds. I've seen them over the year. I, I could watch them and listen to their content and be like, yeah, they a fraud. But they're getting the views. They're getting the watch time hours. They're getting the subscribers, so YouTube will partner with them. So it's like, okay, you who you done partnered with them. So are you gonna when these people scamming people saying they're gonna send them books and teach them classes and charging people eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars an hour a session? Are you saying that you all good with that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's just, just <laughs> some other platforms out there that need to be uh. Uh, use that have a better moral system, moral system, instead of just subscribers, watch time hours. Yeah, that stuff right there is just man. But that's another discussion. Back to this passport thing, and I'm gonna wind this video down. A guy goes overseas. He 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 starts his life out. Young man, start. He's like, uh, yeah, I uh. I'm going to get my license, I'm going to get a car, I'm going to get a girl, you know, I'm going to do this and that. And so that my generation, Generation X, yeah, we was like, man, get that license, get you some transportation, get you a job, get you a girl, you know, get you, get you a young lady and, you know, go ahead and rock life, get you, get you a home and, and kick it. But a lot of these passport guys, they go overseas and they go backwards. What I mean by going backwards is they have invested time, money, energy into home, the United States. And a lot of them just scrap that and they throw it to the side. Hey, hey man, I'm just all in going overseas, man. Like I ain't spending no more money here. I'm not doing nothing here like that or that. I'm just going, I'm just going to scrap the United States and be done with it. And I was like, hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of going backwards because if I've invested, if I've invested 50, let's say I invested 53 years of my life in the United States, I should be at a place in the United States to where I can go overseas 
and repeat what I did in the United States. Like I'm established in the United States. Income, land, homes, transportation, women. I should be able to go overseas and do the same thing. But here's what I notice. When the passport guy will go overseas, he'll settle for Ubers and renting. Listen, I've had this discussion with many of them in some of the Facebook groups. You guys, like I was 15 and had 16. I get my license, driver permit. I said, man, give me a car. A lot of these guys are like, ah, oh, man, you know, I don't even want to own no car. It's just a hassle to own a car overseas. It's a... But I go overseas, women own cars. So I'm like, what you, like what? You don't own, own a car, own land. Women have houses and homes. And they. And I'm like, so you don't want to own land and transportation and homes overseas. You just kind of, you just, you kind of, Still in the rat race, not establishing yourself. So you're just going to be doing a whole bunch of traveling, spending money. Unless you're in some of those few who are earning money doing it. Most of these guys are spending money. And they'll tell you themselves they're getting more bang for their buck. By going overseas, spending money. And a lot of people act like this passport travel stuff. It's like, ah, oh, it's not that expensive. It's not this. I'm going to break this down and then I'm going to end this video. Because me, I think monetarily, like, it has to make sense to me. On an average, I spend $1,500 to go to Costa Rica for eight days. Transportation to the airport. The flight, taxis, Ubers, uh, Uber Eats, groceries, a luxury condo or a luxury apartment with a security guard, with security gated entry. So you, a pool. So have stay in nice places. And then whatever activities moving around the country, whether it be camping or you know, going out in club and I'm not a drinker and a smoker like that. So I don't even, that's really not in my budget. And I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, invest in female activities of the sexual nature. So that's not in my budget either. But what is in my budget is spending time with, uh, spending time with women. So, you know, it ain't, it, it ain't, it ain't nothing way out of the ordinary to uh yeah pay for a chick's Uber back and forth and uh feed her. I mean that's something you should do when a woman is sliding through. It's another discussion. So yeah, on an average, fifteen hundred dollars a trip. So now I think about that like what can I do with that fifteen hundred dollars? And it'll be equal to or better than that trip abroad. Yeah. One trip, the fellas was like, hey, man, we going, we going to Costa Rica? I said, bro, I'm not going. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that money. And I put this money off to the side. My budget for Costa Rica, I put it off to the side because I felt like, man, I just was just there, dog. It's like we just was there. Why are you going back so soon? So I was like, yeah, I man, y'all go here. Y'all enjoy yourself, man. Just let me know how I go. So I stayed here. I said, I'm going to stay here, man. I'm going to kick it around here. So I stayed out here on the Gulf Coast. And, uh, you know, up Biloxi, Gulfport, that's like the uh, Vegas of the South. So, I mean, I just go over there and get me a, I go over there and get a room. You know, and just hang out. I don't gamble. But I go over there and get a room, man. It's all kind of good food over there. And I mean, I just, I could do that for like a month and a half of just going back and forth with driving and, and getting room, you know, get a room one night, two night, and then go out and eat whatever I want to, man, until I get up to that point of where I've spent my budget of coast, a trip to Costa Rica. And a budget, I can do 
a month and a half, two months of activities for the 1500 versus going to Costa Rica for eight days. Yeah, that's that's my thinking because I'm an established man. I I didn't want to be doing all of that ripping and running and running and ripping until I really got established and a foundation to build upon. And so now that I have that foundation, I'm looking at uh, the overseas abroad thing in a different light. I'm just not going to people's countries to spend money. I'll be the, my seven trips to Costa Rica was investments in learning that country, learning that area, being an observer of life in that area. And okay, how can I establish myself here, which I've already established how I'm going to do the thing in Costa Rica. I'm going to end it on this. Uh, one of these young, inexperienced passport guys, he made a video saying you cannot make it on $50,000 in Nairobi. He said you cannot. He said $50,000 of your income, you're not going to make it in Nairobi. I thought to myself, man, listen, $50,000 of your income, I can make it in any country on earth any city on earth. i give you an example of my research and doing what I do. In Costa Rica, I go over there and buy a spot for $5,000. I go buy a spot up on the mountain for $5,000 away from all the hustle and bustle. See, that's why I say experience, inexperience. The inexperienced American going overseas, yeah, he don't he don't know how to move like that amongst the locals. So the, the, the locals find out you're American, you're going to get the American price. So if you just living like an American, you're going to live like an American overseas. It's going to be expensive. You got to in bed with the locals. So I in bed with the locals. It's like, okay, how much is this if I buy this? $5,000. But don't don't let them know you're an American because the price will go up. Don't shop in the areas where they're going to raise the price because you're an American. Also, it's okay if I want to rent a spot. I just need a little two-bedroom something with a parking spot for a car. I done priced how much vehicles cost, motorcycles. I love riding motorcycle. So it's okay. I'm going to have me a car and a motorcycle in Costa Rica with a nice little spot I pay cash for. Okay, let's say if I don't want to purchase... A, a, a place over there. How much? Uh, I said, let me check and see the rental prices. $150, $200. $300 at the most on place where I would be comfortable living, where I could park my car in the gated spot. Because I had the same type of place in the Philippines. When I live right off the base in the Philippines, same type of shotgun place, it's just straight back. It's like room, kitchen, living room, then a room, then the kitchen, and then another room, or you have a room upstairs. So, yeah, these shotgun places, you just park your car in the front, that's the front door. So, I live in the same type of place, and they have those in, in Costa Rica also. So, I was like, yeah, I'm a, I could do that. So, I priced it all, I priced it all up, like, what would it cost me to live? Okay, so, yeah, I can... Thousand dollars a month, y'all can live off that in Costa Rica because I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna always find some income wherever I'm at. It's gonna be some easy income, but I wasn't even counting that. I was like, okay, the money that I'm making coming got coming in here. I was like, how can I, I can go over there? So that's why I was like, when a young, inexperienced content creator is saying that you cannot make it uh, in Nairobi. Of fifty thousand dollars, I thought to myself, "Man, everybody in Nairobi aren't making fifty thousand U.S. dollars a month, but they live there." I'm gonna give it to you all later. Peace.